now that we've got our image of the worm and wheel imported we need to scale it to size from the information given by the viewer the distance between the, the tip of one tooth to the other is 7 sixteenths of an inch or 11.11 millimeters so we'll measure what it actually is then we're going to scale it by uh, that proportion so the way to measure it is just choose the line tool expand this to the maximum so it can be as accurate as possible and find that corner click and drag and through the center in that corner there 26.14 so the actual diameter of this image for the worm wheel is 26 26.14 so we'll get rid of that line we don't need it now because we can't scale these images directly we've got to use a little trick so we need to put a bounding box around this so we choose the worm and wheel in the structure tree select the select tool and we see some handles pop up and then we can select the rectangle and you notice where the handles popped up and you can find them fairly easily so we'll draw a rectangle find the other one over here there it is right now that's an accurate bounding box and we then go into design mode and select the surface we need the pull tool which is selected and the scale tool and it's asking us to pick an anchor point so we'll pick this bottom left hand corner now if you have done everything right you should have a an arrow here telling you what's going to happen so that means it's going to scale the whole thing in a direction you calculate so the proportion is we want it 11.11 divided by 26.14 was it well I'll be near enough return there we are so we need to then drag this image now into this box and it should be the right size now if we select the select button on the woman wheel picture we can now see our handles now if you just hover on this corner one you see four arrows pointing up down left and right which means you can do all that with it but if you press the shift key you just get two arrows pointing diagonally which means it's going to scale in proportion so you've got to drag it down to there we are just so that the bounding box appears there release Okay, now if we measure it, we should get near near enough 11.11. Screw, turn it up. Move the centre to there. Should go through the centre. Let's see what it is now. Oh, look, 11.1. .1. So that's not bad at all. So turn off the curves we have our image at the right scale so we can now trace around these teeth to get our tooth forms so we're going to use one of these for the worm gear and also for the, the spur gear for the simple form of it and then use 
one of these with an involute curve on for a more sophisticated worm wheel. Now that we've got our images loaded in and to scale, we can start making our thread forms. I'll start with this simple trapezoidal one first and we're going to start off by moving right in close so we can start with an, an accurate line. Now we've got a line tool selected. We're going to find the start of this line which I would say is there. Start drawing a vertical line. See it clicks to verticality and I would say that that's about the length of that line. So we've now got the tip of the tooth there. So now we can easily find the center, locates the center for us, and we can draw a horizontal line at 90 degrees to the one we've done quite accurately there. Escape, we're going to right click on it and make it into a mirror line. So anything we do on this side is reflected over here. So again if we move in, we'll find the end of this line and draw to this point, move in so we can get it accurately. I'd say that's about right there. So now we have it reasonably accurate and symmetrical because of our mirror line and we're virtually going to draw a bit extra on our tooth form so it will embed nicely into the root part of the, the worm gear. So we'll finish it off by drawing a line there. Now we can right click again, unset says mirror line. We really needn't have done that because we can still clip it out. Whoops. Right. So if we we'll see if we turn turn off the image, we've now got our tooth form here the trapezoidal tooth form. We're going to do the same idea for the involute curve. Now looking at this we can't see if there's any of the teeth are totally vertical or horizontal. They're all at different angles, not an exact quadrant. But nevertheless we can still make our tooth form and again we start by homing right in on, on a line so we can get it as accurate as we can. Select the line tool, draw a line as ac accurate as we can in the middle of this great thick image line to that looks right. And again We can draw another line in from the centre. It's very handy this, it finds the centre for us nice and easily. Continue down to the centre and making sure that the little square symbol is apparent we can click there. And that's our centre line. And similarly we'll make it a mirror line. Fireworks are going off I hear. It's closing in on the new year. So if we turn it off we see now we've got the tip of the tooth here on the centre line. We're now faced with making this curve and we want to start the curve here and then follow it round to this point here at the end of the fillet. So I'm going to put the fillet in first. 
and the way we do that is again we home in to be accurate now I would say this this fillet part of the curve starts about here yeah that's the straight part and it ch changes from being curved that way it starts to go that way about there and finishes up so to turn around about here now we put going to put a fillet in around this part here so we've got this line with its ends and the tool we're going to use for that is the three point arc this one here and we look at one end then the other end and we estimate I'd say about there turns out it's a 0.18 millimeter radius arc trim away trim away our construction line move in and that's what we've got at the moment we've got the tip <coughs> and the two corner radius fillets now we're actually going to do the involute part to finish it off and we're going to for that we're going to use the spline tool so we find our end here and follow the curve around and by the end of the right I think that's it we'll turn off the image and what do we get and I think that's quite a nice tooth form for our involute tooth now that we've got our thread form in we can put the root diameter in, select the circle, set a point and find the end of one of these there, escape, turn off the worm image and we've got our tooth now sitting nicely under the root of our worm wheel. We don't need this anymore so we can delete it and we're now going to select the tooth part we can now move this into the center we're going to make patterns create a pattern and then start rotating this until we see there we are multiple right round so somewhere around here is something that says how many teeth we've got there is saying eight but we want ten just type ten return and we've got ten teeth select the trim away we trim away these bare parts And now we have a ten toothed involute worm wheel. Well, I think that will do for this part of the tutorial. I'll finish there and hope you're enjoying this so far. Next time, I'll show you how to make these into 3D parts and how we can skew them to mesh with the worm gear. Bye for now. Bye.